Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And this puzzle is by Bremster. <laughs> As you can see from the stripes in the grid and perhaps intuit from that, it is a, an indexing puzzle, a 159 puzzle. Um, and I'm terrible at these. So let's watch me flounder for, well, I'm gonna say half an hour, but who knows? Might be longer, might be shorter, I don't know. Um, We'll have a look at that in a moment. Don't forget that, um, don't, well, I mean, don't forget all the normal things around the channel. Actually, um, tomorrow is the last day for entering the competition, isn't it? It's the last day for entering Trick or Treat by the Skunk Works. Brilliant. Six by six Sudoku pack. Listen, it's easy enough that even if you haven't started, get onto our Patreon, download the pack. You can get the nine puzzles done and get in the draw for the prize. You might not be able to get all 16 done to get on the roll of honor, but if there's one left and you're just still working away at it, give it an extra shot to get over the line now. 4 p.m. our time tomorrow is the deadline. Um, and that's on Patreon along with all sorts of other stuff and our apps. They're all available on the links under the video, including Line Sudoku um, and Sven Sudoku Pad and the merchandise. But the first link is to this puzzle. It's called Breakout by Bremster and I'm gonna go through the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Digits in the red shaded cells in column one indicate the position of the one in that row. So if we had a six here, the one in the row would have to be in the sixth column. And that's how that works for ones, and it works the same for fives in column five, and for nines in column nine. In a quadruple circle, the digits must be placed at least once in the four cells touching that circle. Why does it say at least once? Because there are circles straddling boxes and you could get two threes around this if you wanted to. Those are the rules, give it a try. I am gonna start now, let's get cracking. And with these quadruple circles, look, we've got a, I like to spot X wings. We've got a one in both of those two by twos. You know, I could pencil mark that like that, but that's gonna use up the two ones in columns two and three. So the one in column one, is, which tells you where the one is in its row in column one is gonna be in one of these cells. Ah, and let's remember this important fact about these 159 puzzles, that these groups of three cells must contain one low, one midly, and one high digit. The reason is fairly easy to understand, actually, because this, these are telling you where the ones are in the rows. And if you've got a one in this cell, that's saying that there is a one. Ironically, it's saying there is, let's do it with, let's do it with twos. If you had a one in this cell, oh, that's, I, I don't know how to explain this better. Sorry, that was, that was a useless beginning. Let's say you had a nine in one of these cells, telling you that one was in position nine in that row. Then you couldn't have an eight or seven in one of these cells because it would put one into the same box as where you've already been told there is a one from the nine. So there has to be one low, one middly, and one high digit. So now we've got the ones there. Look, we can't have a two in these cells and we have to spread out one, two, and three amongst these three groups of cells. We can't have a two in those cells because of this two quadruple. So we do have a two in one of those. Three is in one of those two because of this three is telling you that can't be a three. And the message from this is that one is in row three in one of these places. Well, we know where it is from the pencil marking of the ones there, in column three, sorry, in one of these rows. It can't be here, it is here. And there we go, we've started. This is much better than my normal effort on a indexing puzzle. Now there's a one in one of those two cells by Sudoku and quadruple. And by 159, that means this is a seven or eight pointing to the one in one of those cells. There must be a one in one of these, and this is four, five, or six and there might be a way for me to know better where it is. Now, this can't be a two because we can't put a one there. So one of these is putting a one in one of those cells. 
Ah, yeah, yeah. There's a two in one of those cells, so this quadruple requires there to be a two in one of these. Then there's a two in one of these, but we know where it is from the one, two quadruple up here. I've got another digit. Come on, I'm going to celebrate each individual digit at the beginning of this. Then there's a two around here. Then there must be a two in row three somewhere there. It's getting quite tight to fit the three in. In fact, we won't look, that three is looking across at those cells. So this quadruple needs a three below it. Oh, I'm even wondering if there's going to be symmetry. So the three in box two is up at the top now. And the three around this quadruple is down there. Now, I'm going to see if I can work the same trick with nines here, because I wonder if Bremster has put an enormous amount of symmetry in. There's a nine in one of those three cells. So the eight in this column must be in one of these pairs of cells, and it's not in this one because of that eight quadruple. So it's in one of those. Then there's a seven in one of these. Now the message of this eight is to put a nine in one of those cells. It's not allowed to be here. So it must be in one of those two. Then there's got to be a nine in one of those two, so one of those is a seven. And I think I've kind of not quite achieved as much as we did up there somehow. Fair enough. Um, now seven, this seven quadruple, we've got a seven in one of those. So one of those is a seven, one of those is a seven. I'm doing some quite liberal pencil marking. Now, I did actually spot this when I was doing the rules. I haven't used it at all yet. Eight and nine. That's a full double X-wing, putting eight and nine in those cells in row seven. It doesn't actually do all that much. I don't even definitely know that that can't be eight from the quadruple. I don't think I'm meant to. Okay, but, you know, I'm still quite happy with getting a bit of a go on here. Now, what else can we then do? Ones, nines, there's, oh, there is one five, okay. There's got to be a f one five, no, no, there's two fives in circles. And they do look very symmetrically disposed, I have to say. I don't really know what's going on. Oh, there's a two X-wing as well in those pairs. So there must be a two somewhere along here. Again, not really sure what that's achieving for me. Now, ah, there has to be a low digit in these cells and it has to be three because as this is what we've been saying. There has to be a higher, middle and a low in those. It's a bit uh, entropic. And one and two are confined around there, of course. So that's a three. That's putting a nine into column three there. Now look, eight and nine, there has to be a low digit uh, sorry, a high digit here. Oh, no, I've kind of done that already. Um, oh, so this was only achievable, this, this specific placement, because we'd got that three. Right, fair enough. Um, there has to be a high digit in this group of cells, a seven, eight, or nine. It's not allowed to be eight or nine. So one of those is a seven. Oops. One of those is a seven. Putting a one in one of these cells by the indexing rule, that takes one out of that cell and puts it in there. Now we know the corner is an eight to index into that cell. And now we know there must be a nine in one of these three, because that's where the last high digit in column one goes. And that nine is saying there is a one in one of these three. Mm, well, the nine points to the one there and the one points back to the nine, wherever it is. And I don't know the answer. Two, one, nine, eight, three. So these are from four, five, six, seven and include a seven. Mm, it's not very interesting, but it does mean that there is a seven in one of these cells in column three. It's always better to get these place digits. Now, this can't be a three because it would put a five there. Yeah, that sort of thing is worth considering. Can that be a one? Yes, it would put a five there. And it can be a two and put a five there. 
Hmm, it would be nice to do something with these threes. Can't really see what it would be, though. Now, there's, now there's a five somewhere there. So there's a seven or eight in those cells. There's a five somewhere there. Ah! There can't be a five in either of those cells. That's quite interesting, because that would require a three in one of those two, and we seem to have narrowed down three in the box. That was based on the quadruple. So since three can't be there, five can't be there, and this is now a one-five pair, that places five in box one, which puts a one there. And you see, once you get one of these red digits pointing to another one, they mutually point. That must happen. Um, and this is a four, six, seven triple. There's a one, five there, two there. This is three or eight. And the four around this four quadruple, which I hadn't really seen before, is there. So this is now a two, four, nine triple. And this is a one, six, seven triple down here. Now, that means that ones are in column two, column four, and column nine from there. This means ones are in column one, column six, and column seven. Okay, well, that didn't actually shed a lot of light, but can that be a two putting a five here? No, it can't because of that one five pair. So now we've got an X wing on twos, which means that the two in column five must be in this box. And that's putting a five into one of those cells. So the two must be down here. And I think now I've got an X wing on twos in rows five and six, putting a two somewhere here. Oh, this corner marking's going crazy today. Now, what was I thinking? I was thinking something that that did. Yes, this can't be a three because the low digit in this group is a two, so that's not a three. So we've actually got three around this quadruple, we've found it. As usual in a quadruple puzzle, although the rules theoretically allow two of a digit to be around a quadruple, it rarely happens. Um, that's become a three. There is a three in one of these cells, putting a five in one of these, which I should have known anyway. There's a nine, well, it has to be in one of those two. Two, nine, five, four has to be over here. Liberal pencil marking, I'm afraid that is what you are going to get. Two, four, nine, one, five. Now, that's not a three, that's an eight. This is a three, seven, six triple, and that one is not a three, obviously. That eight go, joins the four and five here and it must surround its eight quadruple. So four, five, eight, one, six, seven. These are two, three, nine, and that can't be two, and that can't be nine. Right, now, one and five, that's forming the X-wing on twos, isn't it? And one of these is a nine. And I say, yeah, that one can't be a nine because of the quadruple, and that means the two has to be in one of those cells. The two in column nine that's putting a nine in column two. And that has to be touching the two diagonal, the two quadruple, so it goes there. And that's not a two, that's a two now. That seven says there's a nine specifically here. That makes this a three. Um, yeah, that nine was mandated by the two. It's odd when it just, oh, that can't be a seven. So this is putting a one either in its own cell or there. Yeah, okay, so one of these has become a seven, that's right. So these quadruples keep chipping in just when you sort of get stuck with other things. The quadruples are useful. So there's no, there is a five in these cells. What did we say that meant? That one of these is a seven or an eight. Ah, look, this can't be an eight. And I've pencil marked eight here, so it's gonna have to be there. As long as I'm right about that, I can't quite remember why I knew that wasn't an eight.
why did I pencil mark eight only into those cells? It is the hide. Oh, because it's putting a nine in one of those two. Yes. So now the eight is there. That's okay. That's a nine and that's not. This seems to have to be the seven around the quadruple. Um, there's a nine in one of these two, which is self-referential, and therefore we don't get a partner cell. Nine, eight, seven. One of these is a three. It's just Sudoku. One of these is a three, also Sudoku. There's an eight somewhere around here, which is an X-wing with eights. That's I probably sort of used that already. That can't be seven by... Sudoku now. Um, this is a 249 triple right. I'm going to just be a bit more thorough in marking those. That can't be two and that can't be four. Now this is saying that there's a one there or there. This is saying that there's a one there or there. Fives. Right. This can't be an eight. So five can't be there. And therefore, five must be in one of those cells around this quadruple. Therefore, one of these is a seven pointing to column seven. Now, oh no, not sure if that gets anything done. It felt like it was a good spot, weirdly. Now, I don't know. Three, one, two, seven, nine, eight. This is four, five, or six. It can't be. It could be five. That's really weird. It's probably not really weird. It just feels a bit weird. Right. Five is there. Five is there. That's because of the quadruples. The five in the central box. Yeah, I just don't know. It could sit next to a four or a six or just be its own central five. Um, now, this cannot be a 2, obviously. 2 is in one of these cells. That's not very interesting. Just don't know much about the middly cells in the, in the indexing columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. Yeah, now, this. Right, 7 is used in the middle indexing column there. So down here we must have eight or nine as the high digit, and it's got to be in this cell. Um, and that is saying that five is in one of these two. And that means this is a four, that's interesting. This is a five eight pair, and that means one of these is a three, yes, I kind of had that. Oh no, look, there's a three there, so that's fixed where the three is. That also places three here, that places five, that makes this a nine. Now I can take nine out of those cells. That three is putting a five here, that's the indexing. Uh, two, four, nine, three, five, now. This is a middly digit, obviously, four, five, or six putting a five somewhere in these positions. Yay, don't know quite what to do. There's got to be an eight. Can these be an eight? Yes. In fact, one, uh, oh, that eight clue is now useless because one of these three has to be an eight and one of those two is an eight and both eights can't be there. So there's always gonna be one around this quadruple. So I think that's just there for symmetry now. Now we had, so what's going on up here? These are from one, four, and six. These are from nine, four, and six. One of them is a nine. One of them is putting a nine in one of these positions. Nine is going in one of those. Oh, that can't be a nine by Sudoku. That's probably been available for a little while. Seven. I find this so difficult to get through. Let's 
Yeah, I mean, there is a one in one of those by the indexing. And that leaves this to only be four or six, which may not help, but it's kind of a weird fact to me. This isn't three, obviously. This is four, six, or eight as well. One, nine, seven, three. So two and five. That's not a five. I've worked that out because that can't be an eight. So five must be in one of these cells and is indicated by an eight in one of these. Well, it's got to be here, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Eight there, five there, not here. That place is two. I mean, that's quite straightforward progress. Oh, sorry, I'll be back in a minute. I literally do have to do this thing now, but it's good progress, I'll be back. Well, I was away for considerably longer than expected there, as will no doubt become apparent when my time comes up at the end of this puzzle. Also, while I've been away, it's raining like gangbusters outside, so um, goodness knows what's going on. Anyway, I don't know where we got to, so I'm going to be picking this up. I've got this two highlighted at the top. Um, we've just placed that. Now, still some indexing to do. Up here, yeah, we're putting a nine in one of those and one of those. One, five, nine, seven, three. We need a two. We can't have a two here. The two in this column is here. Okay, that's, that's the immediate benefit of that two that we got. Two, nine, seven, eight. So three, okay, that hasn't really advanced anything. This is four, six, or eight, which... Um, yeah, it doesn't really do anything there either. Five, there's a five in one of those cells. So either that, that can't be a four. Is that interesting? No, because that can be a four. I was hoping to isolate four into this group. Oh, this can't be an eight. That's pretty clear since we got the eight here. We've got an X wing on eights so that's gonna fulfill the eight quadruple with no difficulty at all. One, six, and seven. I feel we're pretty close here. I was, I was in a bullish mood as I left the puzzle. One, six, four, six, two, and five to fit in in this group of cells. Oh, come on, think. Let's find a quadruple that we haven't quite finished fulfilling. We need a five in one of those. That puts a seven in one of those. One, seven, two, eight. Three, nine. This is one of the middly numbers, four, five, or six, just by elimination. Um, if it was a five, that would put a six here. Mm. Um, right, nines, the nine in this box is in one of these three positions and is therefore indicated either by a four here. This can't be a six because of that three. So, but this could be four or six. Now, if that, that can't be, oh no, this is indicating where one goes. So that's either here or here, not here. This can't be a four because of the quadruple. So. One is not a possibility there. One has to be in one of these with a four there. Ooh, if that was a four, putting a one there, what happens to this cell? It explodes in a puff of dust. So that is not a four, that's a nine. And that's a two, and that's a four. And now we can place all the ones relevant to those positions there. That gives us a five. That stops that being a one. It stops this being a one. That puts nine in one of these two positions. So that's a nine, eight pair. This is not two. So we've got two in the central. Oh yeah, we placed five, so the two was obvious. That's now a seven, putting five here. This is a, so we can finish row four with a six and a four. Still got five and six to place, but six won't work here because five can't go there. So that's a five, that's a six. Seven in this row is there. That's a three, that's a three. Um, and 
this is putting nine, I don't know, four, six, putting nine in one of those positions. Okay, now, this is not five, and this is four or six, but it can't be four, so that's six. There's five. This is four, there's five. That fixes two on the X wing. And now we're nearly finished. We get a six here. Good pencil marking. That's a one there. That's self-referential. And the ones here, or the, the indexing here, is putting ones in two of those positions. This is six or seven. Up here we've got four, seven, and nine. How is this not finished now? Nine can't be in four or six in this row, because they're three and five. So that is a self-referential nine. Now nine is in one of those positions. Six, eight, that is four or seven. I'm still pencil marking away. Uh, nine, three, four, five, two, okay, we're not done yet. I've probably just missed a bit of indexing that's helpful. Have I got all the fives in the grid? Yes, to go along with all the fives down the central column. I've got all the ones in the grid apart from those two. And I've got all the nines in the grid apart from rows two and six where they form an X-wing. Okay, so we're okay, but I still need another breakthrough. That can't be six. Four is in one of those. That is four or seven. Now, it was a really helpful thing with the four and the one there, but why? So, if that was a six, making that a one. Oh, look, there's a six, seven pair in this row. So, these are from one, four, eight. So's that. Okay, if that was a six, that's a one. And that's a one. I mean, there's no problem with which disposition of ones on the diagonal I do there. Why isn't that six, seven pair helping a bit more? So I'm tempted to say that this can't be six or seven because we'd have a deadly pattern, but it could be broken up by the ones being resolved by the other digits over there. Now, maybe I've missed... Yes. This can't be eight because of the quadruple. I've forgotten my quadruples when they're so important. Just checking all the other quadruples around the puzzle. I think they're all fulfilled, apart from this one. So, eight is in one of those cells and not here. Oh, and that also can't be a four. So that's come down... Let me just check that. Five, nine, three, four, two in the box six, seven pair that it sees. So as long as this six is right, why do I say this can't be an eight? Because eight in this row is in one of those two. It is all good. Okay, so that has to be a one. And that is going to finish us off, I think. So one's there. Now we can fill in the numbers indexing them as seven and six. That gives us a seven here. That can't be one. We've got a four, eight pair. Um, we've got a six, eight pair. No, that is resolved by Sudoku, which is what we like to see. Now, that nine is being referenced by a six there. And now we've just got three columns to finish. And we also get a final indexing four to put a nine there. Lovely puzzle. That's just class from Bremster. Just what you expect. There we go. So it says 65 minutes. I did not take 65 minutes because I had a long interruption which involved dinner. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, it wasn't entirely expected by me. Um, but that puzzle was lovely. And frankly, for once, I don't feel I was completely hornswoggled by an indexing puzzle. I felt I followed along with what it was trying to do. And that, at least, is personal progression. Excellent. We will see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic. Thanks for watching and bye for now.